But my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is actually quite emotional for me. And I want to share it with you, inshallah. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm going to talk to you from my heart to your heart, raw as raw can be. Tell me, brothers and sisters, we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our homes, we cut off our family ties. Our prayers, a lot of us were not praying. Our hijab, we wear immodest clothing. We try to justify our clothing and try to justify our immodest behaviors. When we know that we are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing the wrong thing, we betray, we cheat, we lie, we boast, we show off. And then what do we expect? Do we expect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bring gold and silver upon us from the sky? Is that what parents do? We call these types of parents, parents who spoil their children. They bring out the worst in them. But parents who, they restrict their children from certain things. They make them go through certain hardships. They are the ones who come out resilient. They are the people who understand empathy. Sometimes a mother may get so angry at her child. And maybe that child rebels and goes outside and says, I'm not coming back. You know, I know a mother who said, if you want to go out the house, then go. And she packed his bags and said, go. When he went outside, went around the block, he started to cry. And he came back to the door, started knocking, 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 knocking. Mom, 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 please forgive me. I'm sorry. He started to cry. And she's inside ripping apart. She doesn't want to hurt her son, but she's thinking that if I don't teach him a lesson of hardship right now, he's going to run away and hurt himself or do something terrible. When somebody loves you, this is what they do, my brothers and sisters in Islam. You know, something that happened to me, my son and my brother died before my eyes. And wallahi al-azim, I have never felt... I have never felt the humility as I felt that day. Two things in my life I will never forget. And that is seeing my son die before my eyes and his soul going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While I couldn't even hold it, I couldn't take it back. And I realized that I don't own him. Allah owns him. And then my brother. And then burying them and walking away from the grave. So harsh yet at the same time big reflect. And I thought to myself, Wallahi, truly, I don't own anything. I don't own my son. I don't own my brother. They all go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know what? Death is not going to ask me for my permission. We are all returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So returning back to Allah is not something that makes us afraid. But we need to humble ourselves. Humble ourselves that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that can bring good or take away evil. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he honored us when He created us to the point that He showed us off to the angels. He said, I am going to place on the earth an important type of people. They will reproduce and they will inherit each other and look after this earth and obey me. And the angels were so surprised. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not place us on this earth out of anger or because he wanted us to go through hardships of suffering for no reason. Nor does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like to see us in pain. In fact, there is a beautiful hadith which is sahih in Bukhari and Muslim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the long hadith, my servant keeps coming closer to me until I become his eyes that he sees with and his ears that he hears with and his hand which he touches with and his legs which he walks with and listen to the end of the hadith which a lot of people don't finish off with. And he said, and there is nothing that I hesitated more than taking the soul of my slave when he or she is about to die. For he dislikes it, he is afraid of it, and I hate to give him pain. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want harm upon us. But you see, your parents love you, don't they? We all believe it, that instinctively our parents love us even more than themselves. Wallahi, if they were to see you dying in front of them, your parent will cry to say, I wish it was me instead of you. If you are sick, your parent will say, I wish it was me instead of him or her. If they see a little piece of hair inside your eye, they say, I wish it was in my eye than his or hers. And the one who created your parents is Allah and he loves you more than your parents. But sometimes your parents have to teach you a lesson. And that lesson is not because they want to harm you, but in order to bring you back so that you can stand on your own two feet and be a good person. So that you can grow and be a leader of righteousness and so that you can do the right thing, not the wrong thing. My brothers and sisters in Islam, what is this catastrophe that has happened around the world? 
the likes of which we have never ever seen before. Many epidemics and pandemics have happened before, but I'm not talking about that. I am talking about the state that we are in today globally from east to west, north to south. There isn't a house except that it's isolated. There isn't a mosque except that it has closed. Subhanallah, Mecca and Medina, we are isolated from. When has this ever happened? It is so hard to see your own parents, your own family. What is happening? This virus, my dear brothers and sisters, and what has happened in the world economically and in our social, everything that is happening to us is from none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This has globally spread throughout the world upon the weak and the strong, the old and the young, the innocent and the evil, the Muslim and the non-Muslims. The only one who can lift this is Allah. And the only one who brought it upon us is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, yes, there are circumstances. Yes, there are natural occurrences that cause things. This is all part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan on this earth. I've been thinking about this. I've been looking at it. And the only thing that I can think of in the Quran is the following verse. Indeed, Allah will not change the state of a people until they change the state that is within themselves. A lot of people misunderstand this verse. They think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change a bad state of a people, a suffering of a people back into goodness and comfort and blessings until they change their state. It's the opposite. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not begin the suffering with us. He begins the blessings, the comfort, the security. Doesn't he bring you out from your mother's womb secure? Doesn't he give your parents mercy to look after you? Doesn't he give you a sense that he is there with you? Doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you provisions? Don't ever assume wrong of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he will not change the good state of a people, the blessed state of a people, the comfort of the people, the security of the people until they change that is within themselves. They become evil. They become wrongdoers. They become sinners competing for materialistic things. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this in order for us to return. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never change the state of a blessing which he has given upon people. Allah doesn't take away the ni'mah. Allah doesn't take away the blessings from us. Allah doesn't take away the security from us. Allah doesn't take any of this provision from us until we change it. We've done something wrong. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran that corruption has overcome you, has become powerful. Corruption has overtaken you. Corruption has become the lawmaker. Corruption has exceeded all bounds on land. And the word bar comes from bir, which means to be good towards someone. The earth is good to us, that we are bad to it and bad to the other people, some of us. Why? Allah says so that Allah can make them taste a bit of what they are doing wrong in the hope so that in the hope that they may return. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't punish people totally here in this world. The punishment is in the hereafter. The enormous reward is in the hereafter. But in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets us straight sometimes. What is happening now in the world is a wake up call. It is an opportunity for us to return, for us to fix. Brothers and sisters, it's not up to you to fix the whole world. You fix yourself. Fix what is in within your family. Do you know why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done this? Well, Allah says in the Quran, every human being is responsible to judge themselves. I'm not here to judge you. I can only judge myself. Look at us. Look at our state. What has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed about us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us on this earth in order to go through trials and tribulations. Why? Not so that he can know whether we are righteous or not, but in order for us to know ourselves so that we know what our faults are. So that we know how to grow. Wallahi, if there was no suffering, none of us would know empathy, mercy, forgiveness. I mean, look at Adam alayhi salam. Our mother and father, if it wasn't for that, Adam alayhi salam and Hawa would have not known what forgiveness and mercy means. Brothers and sisters in Islam, did you know that trials and tribulations come in two ways? Allah says, we will try you always and make you shift between state to state in both bad and good things. And wallahi al-azim, the worst type of trial is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us go through blessings. Because when a person has wealth, when you have health, when you have everything, when you have security, you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that person. You think that you are secure, you've done nothing wrong. And we forget that we belong to Allah and from Him we came and to Him we shall return. We forget whether we are boastful, we forget that we are arrogant, we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some of us, what we think that, oh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you wealth, that means He loves you. We hear this statement all the time. Well, Allah must love him.
But really, did you know that this is the biggest trial? Because a human being reacts when they see something is gone. When you suffer, we react. We return. We start thinking. We start reflecting. Then our instinct kicks in. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told us in the Quran, and this verse, wallahi, hit me really hard. He says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before you there were people whom we bestowed upon them, we gave them hardships, we took away from them certain comfort and certain provision, and we put upon them certain sicknesses in the hope that they may humiliate themselves and return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humiliated. Wallahi, it hurts me that some people, what happens to them? with this virus and with this catastrophe that's happening here, they look at the situation just like the son of Nuh. When Nuh was on the ark, he called out to his son while the waves were coming and going and says, please climb aboard, climb aboard my son. And his son, you know what he said? I'll go to some hill and it'll save me from the waves. Just like now, oh, I'll just take some precautions and it'll save me from everything else. Number two, some people, they act like the people of Had. You know, the people of Had when the black clouds came, they said, oh, we're only going to get a bit of rain and suddenly it's going to go. This is just a virus like any other, other virus that has happened before. Viruses come and go. Subhanallah, what are you trying to say? You're trying to justify this and look past it as something insignificant? How do you know that the, th that the, the plagues and the epidemics that have happened to Muslims before us in history weren't also because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted them to return because maybe some of them, maybe they had spread corruption and evil. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted them to return because of something. And now is our time. Whether you are Muslim or non-Muslim, my brothers and sisters in Islam, what do we do now? Now is the time of repentance. O oh, you who backbites, start fixing yourself. O oh, you who has cut his family ties, find a way to connect your ties. Find a way to talk to your parents. O oh, you who has become rebellious against their parents, find a way to make it up to them, my brothers and sisters. O oh, you who is showing off and posting things just so that people can give you likes and to give you attention. Look back at yourself. Who are you, my dear brother and sister? And remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gave you what you have. And remember to have your intention clear and sincere. For Allah, Allah doesn't accept anything unless it's sincere. And this hadith is in Bukhari as well. He said, be careful. For there will come a time when five things will happen to you. And one thing he said, if you reach that time, be aware. Fahisha, which means immodesty. When shyness is gone. Shyness, I mean like people don't care if they do the wrong thing and they normalize it. When zina becomes widespread. When people start sleeping around and not caring about nudity and pornography and so and so. It becomes widespread and normalized. And then suddenly you will see diseases that come out in, um, among the people which you have never known before. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it is a time for tawbah. Listen to what Allah says. O oh, you who have regretted, O oh, you who have become depressed from themselves, O oh, you who have given up on yourselves because of sins or because of wrong things that you have done. It doesn't matter if it's the size of the, the mountains. Do not give up from the mercy of Allah. Allah forgives all sins. Brothers and sisters, now we have health, alhamdulillah. We have time. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dua in your sujood. Brothers and sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in sujood in the middle of the night when Aisha radiallahu anha said, I woke up in the middle of the night and I couldn't see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, is next to me. So I moved my arms around and I could feel the soles of his feet. He was in sujood sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah, he was in sujood saying, Allahumma, oh Allah, I seek refuge in your pleasure. From your anger, I seek refuge in your forgiveness from bringing me distress. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in your forgiveness. And Aisha radiallahu anha, she also saw him making so much dua to the point where she thought he had died. So she touched him. She touched him on his finger. And when he finished, the Prophet said, said, Ya Aisha, did you think that I had passed away? She said, Wallahi, you were so long sitting in your sujood that I thought you had died. Subhanallah, this is Rasulullah making sujood to Allah and calling upon Him. The brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more merciful to us than our own mothers. Look at yourselves and what you are doing in your homes. Look at yourselves and how you are with your community, with your friends, with your neighbors, with your parents, with your siblings, with yourselves. And repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the time comes. This virus will go away bi idnillah and it will not stay. However, what I fear is what we're going to do after it. Are we going to return back? to our desires and our temptations? Are we going to, out to celebrate in haram ways? Are we going to return back to our indecency and our immodesty as if nothing had happened to us? Wallahi, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to send down reminders and reflections. Even some of them will be harder and harder and harder until we return because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you back. My brothers and sisters in Islam, it is time for us to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and think about ourselves, what we have done wrong, what we have to fix in ourselves, how we, after this pandemic is over, how are we going to be after this? Are we going to continue in what we are doing in the wrong? Or are we going to fix? Are we going to increase in our Iman and our worship or are we going to move backwards? Are we going to continue to harm others or are we going to stop it? My brothers and sisters, even if you can't do anything at all in this isolation, Rasulullah said, even if a person stops their hands and their tongue from harming other people, then they get rewarded for it. My last advice, inshaAllah. Rasulullah said, and his hadith is in Tirmidhi and it is authentic. He said, there isn't a single piece of harm that comes to a believer, whether it is a mental exhaustion, physical exhaustion, it could be depression, it could be anxiety. Wala ham, wala gham means that you are fearing the future, harm in the future. This is called ham. And gham means that when you live in a situation where all the doors are closed upon you, just like Prophet Yunus alayhi salam, when he was in the belly of the big fish inside the darkness of the ocean, and, he, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we saved him from the uh, cl um, claustrophobia of the stomach of the fish. We are now in a claustrophobia and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you for your patience. Even if it is the prick of a needle that you receive, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives your past sins and He washes them away as if they didn't exist. I thank you for listening.